Hello and welcome to GM Construct for episode 13 of Warmod Essentials. I've noticed that quite the popular request for a video lately has been the logo at the beginning of every video. That is the light up board that goes from left to right displaying the WME logo. So, in celebration of 300 wonderful subscribers, thanks every single one of you, I'm going to show you guys how to do this. We're going to make a scoreboard sort of thing that lights up row by row, displaying its lights one by one in sequence from the bottom to the top. And by the time we're finished, it should look a lot like the scoreboard that appears in the beginning of this video and every other episode. Now a project like this is almost invariably going to require a timing device. The timer we're going to use is going to keep track of what lights need to turn on at what times. So go ahead and grab your tool gun to pull out a gate, time, timer. All right. And now that we have this placed, we need to go ahead and define some parameters for our timer. We're going to get out a constant value with the value 75 and then 1 through 6. These are going to be our increments. They're going to be later used by some greater than gates to tell the lights when to turn on. Each number that we place inside this constant value is going to represent the number of seconds that passed since we pressed the start button on the timer. 1 being 1 second and 6 being 6 seconds. The 75, however, will represent the brightness of the lights. We could theoretically set it to 255, putting the lights at full brightness. But in the daylight setting like we're working in, you wouldn't be able to see it very well, and the blur would just blur out the rest of the image. So for our purposes, 75 is a pretty good value. Alright, we've placed our constant value gate, and within it are stored all the values that we just set. Now, in order for these lights to light up in the correct order, we have to tell them when to turn on. One of the ways to do this is by using a greater than gate, which will compare the timer with the values that we just set. So let's go ahead and grab one of those. Now specifically, what's going to happen is as the timer increases, it's going to read from the values 1 through 6. And as the timer increases over those values, 1 through 6, then it will turn the lights on in that order. So go ahead and place a greater than gate aside each layer of lights. Like so. Now the problem with greater than gates is that they only output in 0 or 1, true or false. We need to fix that. So go ahead and grab a gate arithmetic multiply. We're going to set the multiply to multiply those either 0 or 1, by the constant value of 75 that we set earlier. This will make it so when the gate does output 1, indicating that the timer is over the set comparison value, then it will multiply 1 by 75 and give the light its needed brightness. Now, believe it or not, every single component we need is already placed on the board. That's right, it's pretty much that simple. There's just a lot of repetition involved. So let's get wiring. So, to start off our whole chain reaction of comparing and multiplying, we have to tell the first multiply what to multiply by. So go ahead and wire A from the first multiply to the constant value of 75. And then why don't you go ahead and do the same thing with all the multiplies that you have on the board. Like I said, plenty of repetition involved in this project. Now that we finally have that done, we're going to move right on to the second half of the multiply job. Wiring B from all the multiplies to all the greater thans. This is going to bridge the gap between the multiply and the greater than. So when the greater than outputs 1, it's going to multiply by the 75. All this will be explained in conjunction later. Alright, we have our multiplies wired up, so let's move on to the greater thans. First thing we're going to do is wire A from all the greater thans to the timer. Go ahead and repeat this with all the greater thans. Now something you have to consider about comparison gates is that the order of the inputs matters. Take a add gate, for example. A plus B and B plus A are always the same thing. However, A is greater than B and B is greater than A are two different things entirely. Consider this should you ever find yourself using comparison gates, so you don't wind up wiring B over A instead of A over B. 
Moving right along, let's wire b from the greater than to the constant value of... Now here's where it gets complicated. You're going to want to wire b to the constant value that corresponds to the order in which the lights are going to show up. The first one you're going to wire to 1, the second one you're going to wire to 2, and the third one you're going to wire to 3, respectively. So on and so forth until you finish up with the final gates in the sequence. The last step in any successful wire contraption is connecting up the hardware. We're going to have to wire the lights to the circuit that we just made. I'm going to wire blue from the last zero, although you can use whatever color you want to. And remember to wire all the lights to the multiply that corresponds to their row. That way you get that nice row by row lighting up effect. It's really the same principle we've been messing with the whole time. The lowest row being wired to the lowest gate, and the highest row being wired to the highest gate. Everything filled in in between. And I went ahead and got rid of all that extra wiring video for you, because I'm pretty sure you get the idea by now. And the last thing we need to make this contraption successful is the trigger. A trigger that when pressed will start the sequence up the board, and when released will reset it, making all the lights turn off again. A simple 1-0 toggled button will suffice for this job. So let's go ahead and grab one. And with the button placed, that covers about half the problem. We just need to find a way to make it so that the lights turn off when the button's not being pressed. Just grab a gate logic knot. Knot gate basically converts everything that's above zero to a zero, and everything that's equivalent to a zero to one, basically making false is true and true is false. Let's set this up wiring A from the knot gate to the button. So when the button is 1, the gate is 0, and vice versa. Next we're going to wire reset from the timer to that not gate, so that when the button is off, the timer is prompted to reset. Now wire run from the timer to the button. And we got everything done. Let me explain what's going on. The lights start out at 0, the timer at 0, the run value at 0. And when the run value becomes 1, the timer starts to increase. And the lights gradually receive the value of 75, turning themselves on. In this example, the timer starts out less than the comparison value. So the greater than gate will output 0, multiplying 75 by 0 and denying the light power. However, two hundredths of a second later, the timer becomes greater than the comparison value. And the greater than chip will put out 1, 1 being multiplied by 75, turning the light on. Apply this concept to every light on the board, and you've got yourself a finished tutorial. Let's see what it looks like in the real world. Beautiful. Beautiful. Who wants to see that again? I know I do. Well, that just about concludes this tutorial. I hope you guys have as much fun making these as I had making mine. But before I finish this up, I'd like to take the moment to dedicate this episode to all the people who helped push me past 300 subscribers. Thanks guys, I had a lot of fun getting here, and I hope my next milestone is just as much of a party. Anyways, as always, thanks for watching, and I hope this helped.